the Atlanta Hawks are in a position that I would normally completely hate. They have guys and their roster looks solid as a whole, but it evidently just doesn't compare with the upper echelon of the Eastern Conference. But Atlanta might have something up their sleeve, and in all honesty, at this point, with many of their picks being owed to San Antonio, they might as well go all in. This Atlanta team has shown, at least in 2021 and 2023, that they can compete with the best of the best. Obviously, they beat the Sixers in 21, but what people don't discuss much is how they got two games off the eventual champion Milwaukee Bucks as well. Also, in 2023, they made what was almost certainly a sweep or maybe a five-game series in many people's mind into a competitive series against one of the best teams in the game. Atlanta hasn't made the major move that's been floating around yet, but they did make a few minor moves that I think are very good. Before we get into this analysis of the Atlanta Hawks roster offseason and potential moves they could be making going forward, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. It does help me out a ton. We just hit 3k, thank y'all for that, but we are on to 4, so again, if y'all could help us get there, I would really, really appreciate it, and let's get right into the video. Before I get into Atlanta's moves, I want to discuss someone who I feel has become very, very underrated. Narrative controls so much more of public opinion than we realize, and a lot of people don't like Trey Young. This obviously stems from the Knicks series, but I honestly think it reaches back further than that. While I guess I understand why people don't like his demeanor and antics, what has been lost in this media coverage is how effective Trey is as an offensive engine. Obviously, he is one of the worst defenders in the game, but there is a reason someone like Trey is a max player and someone like Tony Allen is a role player. While he did have a bit of an off year, Trey is still only 25 years old, and I think Atlanta's offense will look a whole lot better without John Collins out there. Speaking of John Collins, the major move Atlanta made this offseason was trading John Collins to the Utah Jazz for Rudy Gay and a second round pick. This was just a masterful move by the Atlanta front office. I really thought serious assets were going to have to be attached to dump this Collins deal, and instead, due to the Jazz having to spend money due to new CBA rules, not only does Atlanta get off this horrid contract with about 3 years and $80 million left owed, but they get back a really cheap expiring deal who they have now cut, and a second round pick as well. While Collins obviously had to show something to get this contract in the first place, his numbers have been rapidly declining ever since he signed this deal. From the 2019 to 2021 seasons, Collins averaged 19-9 on 38% from deep. Over the past two seasons, Collins has averaged 15-7 and on 32% from deep. This man really got his bag and chilled. I would say there is some chance for a resurgence in Utah, but they have about 34,000 big men and I really have no clue what they're doing over there. The other major move Atlanta made was extending DeJounte Murray on a four-year $120 million deal. While DeJounte is another player who a lot of people don't like for some reason, I think this is a solid price given the market. I've seen some people say he's not even a top 50 player, which I think is just like, all right, man, like, I, like, I guess, like, I, you know, I guess there's some level of argument, but like, come on. Securing a 26-year-old former All-Star for the next four years for an average of 30 million a year is not bad whatsoever in this current market. While he is inefficient, Murray is a great defender who averages 21, 5, and 6, and I think he's the kind of backcourt mate that a defender like Trey Young needs. DeJounte's three-point percentage along with his attempts a night have also been increasing since 2021, and if this trend continues, I think we could see a completely different dynamic to his game. While he did shoot better percentages in his rookie and third seasons, he hardly played his rookie year and was only taking 1.73s a night in his third year, compared to 5.2 last season. If you're one of the people who just don't like what DeJounte brings to the table at all and wish Atlanta had never traded for him, I guess I understand. But in the position of a front office who just traded major assets to acquire this guy, this extension is more than fair. Now for the rumor mill. The main name that has popped up over the summer was Pascal Siakam. While these talks have cooled off, I think if Toronto comes out sluggish, a Siakam trade could definitely be back in play. As I said, I would normally hate being stuck in a place of mediocrity, but given that Atlanta had gave up a bunch of picks to get DeJounte Murray, they might as well go all in. I really think a lineup with Trey DeJounte, Pascal, and Onyeka could make some real noise. Whoever the fifth starter is, it should be one of DeAndre Hunter, Sadiq Bey, or Bogdan Bogdanovich, and I think these are all solid options. While Hunter would almost certainly be included in a Siakam deal, there are financial pathways to get a deal done without him. In the event that Atlanta could manage to keep Hunter, I think a trade DeJounte Hunter Siakam on Yekka lineup would certainly put Atlanta in the second tier of the Eastern Conference with teams like Cleveland, Miami, and Philly. I also think they would be a Brook Lopez or Drew Holiday or Chris Saps Porzingis injury away from really being able to compete with the likes of Boston and Milwaukee. 
as for the rest of this Atlanta roster, I think there is definitely no shortage of young excitement throughout the bench. Jalen Johnson, AJ Griffin, and Kobe Bufkin are all 21 and younger. And if Capella stays, Onyeka will be coming off the bench. Despite it feeling like a long time since he's drafted, which it has been, he was drafted in 2020, Onyeka is still only 22 as well. And we should see this year if he will live up to his number six overall pick hype. This team isn't without veteran presence though, and I think guys like Patty Mills and Wesley Matthews are decent end of bench rotation options. I think, you know, again, they can 100% provide something which is floor spacing, which, you know, again, if you can shoot, you can play. To wrap this up, I think this should be a pretty fun season in Atlanta. While I understand people, you know, feeling down or not really even talking about the Hawks at all due to the lack of, you know, I mean, again, their major move was, you know, dumping a contract and extending someone. I get the lack of hype and talk, but I feel like people really forgot about them and that playoff series against Boston really showed me the potential that this team could have. I don't know if any higher than a five seed is really possible given Boston, Milwaukee, Miami, and Cleveland, but I expect Atlanta to be in the vicinity of teams like Miami, Cleveland, and Philly record-wise. Again, I really think we began to see the full potential of this Atlanta team during that Boston series, and I fully expect Trey, DeJounte, and the rest of the Hawks score to continue building on that. While a big move is definitely in play, and I think that if the opportunity presents itself, Atlanta should take it, this team should be decent and fun regardless. I think we see Trey Young return to where he was efficiency-wise, and if DeJounte's three-point development continues, I think this could be one of the best and most exciting backcourts out there. You know, again, I you know, the, the problem with the Hawks to me is that I just think there are teams better. Again, if they go out and get a Siakam or, you know, another guy like that, even if they go out, I mean, I don't really know why they go out and get OG in all honesty, but, you know, that's just someone who I thought about. Obviously, he's expiring. You know, the rumor mill has been about with him and, you know, pretty much just the Raptors as a whole. But I think this team should be fun. You know, again, I think people sleeping on Trey Young. I think people are sleeping on DeJounte. I think, you know, again, man, I think this team should be a lot of fun. I think the removal of John Collins will definitely help the offense out. And this team, you know, has some flexibility for the future. You know what I mean? If next offseason they want to go after someone, you know, they have the ability to do, to do that. So again, man, I think there is a lot to be excited about as an Atlanta fan. I can understand, you know, kind of being down in the dumps. But, you know, again, man, y'all are kind of doing what you can after that DeJounte trade. You know, there's really no point in hitting the reset button now. You're without all those picks. You might as well ride this trade DeJounte thing out. And, well, I think they will. And I think it'll be better than a lot of people think. But that's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up. Sub the channel. Turn on that noti bell. Does help me out a ton. You know what I mean? Small NBA YouTuber trying to grow out here. You know what I mean? I put some good time into these videos. So, you know what I mean? If y'all could show that love, I would appreciate it. Also, comment below, you know, your thoughts on Atlanta. If you think I'm completely off base, you think they're going to come out out, lay an egg, be terrible, be in, you know, play in range, you know, like eight to, I mean, again, they'll probably be in, you know, five to, you know, somewhere in the range of four to eight or nine seed all year. But I do think they end up, you know, somewhere from, you know, honestly, if I had to predict, I think they end up as a six or seven seed, but you know, I think they could land anywhere from five to eight. But again, again, I think this team, you know, has the talent, should be able to compete with anyone. We'll see if Trey, you know, again, man, if Trey can return to where he was efficiency wise and DeJounte Murray can, you know, maybe get up to, you know, about like 36% on five or six attempts a game. I think this Atlanta team is going to surprise a whole lot of people. But again, that's going to wrap this one up. Like it up, sub the channel, turn on the noti bill, comment below, and I'm out. Peace.